Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we're going to be taking a look at reading and writing to files. This is something that's often covered in the beginner stages because you might be doing some file reading and writing from like Excel. Maybe you want to open up a spreadsheet and play around with it. Maybe you are saving some data to a file or editing a file for some reason or you just need to read a file. It's something that you're generally going to be doing as you first start off. Uh, and it gives you some of the ideas that you'll build upon when you go to save data in a better way or when you start working with better systems where in some languages you have to make sure you're closing the files so that they don't corrupt. You need to make sure that you're properly handling cases where two programs try to edit the same file at the same time. There's a lot of things you can consider, but the basic gist that happens when you go to edit a file or read it from a file is uh, three different ways that are covered in most languages. You're going to be reading from a file, which is if you need to get some data out of it. You're going to be writing to a file, which is I want to like put data into the file. But usually there's a caveat there, which is you're either writing to a file by overwriting it, which means there's now nothing in the file and then you put your stuff in there, or you're like appending to the file where you have a file and then you're just like adding new data to it. So we're gonna cover those three cases. I'm gonna say case one, read file. Then we'll say case, oops, case two, write file, uh, and then case three is going to be append and I'm actually going to put in parentheses overwrite and then below this we'll do another one that just says like uh, maintain data right so let's start with number one how do we do this well the first thing I want to do just so that it's a bit easier to use this later is I'm going to create a function called read underscore file I'll give it the parentheses those are of course optional in Ruby uh, and then I'll just go ahead and create a new file here, call this example.txt. And then inside of example.txt, I'm gonna type hello world. And then I'm gonna add a second line below that by saying this is a second line. Okay, so uh, let me put the period in there. It's a good idea from GitHub Copilot. So this is our file. We have two lines and we want to read it. Let's go ahead and let's take a look at how we want to do that. The first thing we should do is we should create a file. So we're going to say file is equal to file.open. And then we want to open the uh, parentheses. In here, there's going to be two arguments, which as you'll remember from our functions video, an argument is just like a thing that this needs to work. With puts, the argument is just the text that you want to put to the screen. Here, there's two arguments. The first one is the file name. So let's go ahead and let's give this the file name inside of quotes. We'll just type uh, example.txt. Uh, and then in a uh, second argument, so we'll do a comma because we have a second argument, we're going to have a letter. This letter is either going to be an R for read, it's going to be a W for write, or it's going to be an A for append. And those are going to correspond to our three cases. This is going to be a R for read, a W for write, or an A for append. If you're here just to see how to do that, at this point, you're pretty much done with the video. So you can go ahead and click off. But we're here to read this file and take a look at a bit more of it. So let's go ahead and let's put the file to our console. We're not going to do file.read yet. GitHub Copilot knows more than I am willing to admit right now. But we're going to go ahead and we're going to try this. So let's run this. You can see, once again, nothing happens. Because we put this into a function, we now need to use this function. So let's go down here and let's just say, uh, you know, read file, just at the bottom. We just wanna call read file to see what happens. Let's go ahead and let's run this again. And now you can see we get all of these strange numbers and letters that appear here. Effectively, what we have here is just a file object. We don't want the file object printed to the screen. We want to see what's in that file. So let's call file.read. This is a method or a function just like this, but it's a function on the file itself. So we can use this dot operator to get to the read function. So inside a file, we can you know look around. We do file dot. There's a bunch of other stuff we could do. But in this case, we want to look for the read one. And if you have some kind of like helper in your text editor, it'll give you those autocomplete suggestions. In my case, I know this is going to be read. It's pretty self-explanatory. So let's go ahead and let's run this program now that we've switched this from just file to file.read. And then you can see, hello world, this is the second line. Now, this is fine, but what if we wanted to like go through each of these lines? Maybe we want to do something to the first line or do something to the second line. 
In that case, we don't need to put the file. What we can actually do is a uh, file dot read lines dot each do line just like this. And now instead of just having a file object, we now have a line object. And we'll talk about objects a little bit later. But what this allows us to do is now puts the line. So let's go ahead and let's puts each line. You can see when we run that, we get the same result that we previously had. The magic here is each time we put something though, it's gonna be each of these lines. So if we wanted to, we could just do something like, I don't know, uh, maybe we wanna do a counter equals one. We can put the counter plus, and then a colon, maybe a space, plus the line. And then we'll take a look at what this gives us. If we now run this, we can see that we get a counter plus that doesn't work, which of course means we have to call dot to s on our counter, just like we did in the previous variable videos. Now we have a string plus a string plus a string. So if we run this, you can see, hello world, this is the second line. The final thing we need to do here now is make sure that we're doing counter equals counter plus one. If we now run this one final time, and I'll clear this console, we can see first line is hello world, second line is this is the second line. This is of course not the cleanest way to do this. We could do this a little bit easier by doing a dot each, uh, sorry, a dot with index. And then after the line, we can create our index, or we can even just call this counter if we want to. We can then get rid of this counter right here. I'm gonna hit control B to hide my side panel. We can get rid of this counter because now our counter variable is gonna be declared each time we get into the loop. And now if we run this, you can see we get hello world. This is the second line, but it starts at zero. We could of course start it at one, or we could just do something really, really simple, which is counter plus one. Now there's other ways to change what the counter is by default, but this way at least allows you to do it in a way that we've already covered it. Because the point here isn't really to go through the, the with each index method. But this allows us to see each of these lines. We can now edit them as needed. So if you're reading in each of your lines from your file and you need to do something, this is probably one way to do it. But okay, let's go ahead and instead of just reading the file, let's go ahead and let's write to it. To do that, we're gonna leave our read method down here and we're gonna use a write method. So we'll say def write to file, or I guess we'd say write file. Maybe we make a left file later. Uh, and then in here, we're gonna do effectively the same thing. We're gonna copy this first line with the file.open. We're gonna change this to a W for write, and then we can do whatever we want to. We can say file.write, hello world. I'm actually gonna get rid of this slash n that GitHub Copilot suggested here. We're just gonna do this. So let's go ahead and let's run this. You can see nothing changes because we have a write function. We're not calling it yet. We want to call it. So let's call it below the read file we can go ahead and we can run this. You can see nothing changes. Now this is an interesting bug that you can run into. We are reading the file and then we're writing to it. So whatever we've written to the file, we aren't printing here. This change does happen, but it happens after we put this text onto the screen. So let's actually open up our file and see what's inside of it. If we open it, we can see there's only one line of text. That's because we're only writing this line, hello world. If we want to maintain the old text that had this is a second line, we would need to include this is a second line to our writes. Or what we can do is we can use the append method. I'm gonna go ahead and run this one more time just so you can see the proof. You can see here now it's only printing out hello world. Now you might think this will add a second hello world, but we run into the same issue. It's actually gonna overwrite that first hello world that overwrote the first hello world before that, that also had the, this is a second line line. Bit of a tongue twister. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at a better way to do this. Well, the better way is to write to the file first and then read to the file. So now if we change this from hello world to like one, two, three. Now, if we go ahead and we run this, you can see, oh, nothing's appearing. Why is that? Well, we're running into a bit of an issue after we do our file.write. You see, we're trying to write to a file, or we're trying to read from a file where we were just writing to it. Let's try calling file.close. You can, of course, include the parentheses if you want to, uh, but at this point, I think you get the point. We're calling this function, just like we used with open, but the close doesn't need anything. Let's go ahead and let's try to run this now. If we now try to run this, you can see that one, two, three appears, just like before, but we don't have that issue where we're trying to read from the file as we're still trying to write to it. 
So you change the order here so that you can write first, but then you run into other problems. And this is where you need to be a little bit careful because you're actually probably running read file while you're still writing to it. So you do need to be a little bit careful there uh, to make sure that you're closing things properly. So really what we should do down here is include a file.close as well to make sure that once we're done reading from the file, we close it. So let's go ahead and let's run this program again. You can see that works just fine. As a final note, let's go ahead and let's take a look at appending to the file. We're going to go ahead and create a function, call it def append file. We'll go ahead and we'll say file is equal to file, oops, file.open, just like before with a example.txt as the file name, and then a a instead to say that this needs to be append. We can then do a file.write just like before, and then we can go ahead and do our file.close because we get the point. We're going to go ahead and we're going to append this one, two, three after this one, two, three. So after our write file, let's do our append file function. So we write to it, we then uh, append to it, and then we read from it. Let's go ahead and let's run this. And you can see here we get one, two, three, one, two, three, which is good, but we actually want to get this to be on a new line. So how do we do that? We can either come up here and we can include that slash n just like we did before to say when you write to the file the first time, we then want to enter a new line so that we can append to it. Or you can do something like a puts. So if we do a puts right here in our write file and then we run this, that'll cause the uh, one, two, three to get put to this line and then it'll put a new line after it. So this line right here is actually doing both this one, two, three, and it's doing this empty line here. After we do that empty line, it then writes this one, two, three to the next line. The other way you could do this is you could say, let's write here and let's put here. But what you'll see when we run it this way is if we run this, our one, two, threes are on the same line. If we come over to our uh, example.txt here, it looks like this it's one, two, three, one, two, three with an empty line because this append that happens after the right is adding a new line after the one, two, three. So you do want to be careful in which order you're doing that. Of course, there's other ways to, you know, add your new lines. Maybe you want to uh, make sure that this one, two, three happens on a new line. You can also just include a slash n at the start here. So now this will have a one, two, three with a one, two, three on the next line. So let's go ahead and let's run this. You can see this changes in real time. We have one, two, three, one, two, three, new line. We can, of course, change this text if we want to. So we can say slash n, I don't know, hello world. And then first line here, maybe up here, first line here. So let's run this and we can see first line here and hello world. So we're now writing to a file by overwriting its existing contents. We're then appending to the file by just modifying the file. And then we're reading from that file after we're done with all of our changes. That's going to do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and hopefully I will see you in the next one.